Hi. In the previous sessions, we learned about monohybrid cross. Today, let's learn about a new concept termed Punnett square. Punnett square. This is a very simple concept. It represents the probability of uh, possible genotypes in an offspring in a graphical form. So Punnett square, as the name suggests, it is a graphical representation to calculate the probability of all possible genotypes of offsprings in a genetic cross. So this is just a graphical representation. This was developed, the Punnett square was developed by Reginald C. Punnett. He was a British geneticist. Let us see how this Punnett square works. I hope you remember the last uh, sessions we learned like this crosses, parents, the alleles of the parents separate out in the gametes for both the parents. Then they unite to form the F1 progeny. The F1 progeny are self-crossed. Here again the alleles separate out into gametes. For both the, in both the cases the alleles separate out into gametes. And then they unite at random to get the F2 progeny. Isn't it? The same thing is represented in a graphical format and that representation becomes the Punnett square. Let us see how that representation is done. The representation begins with the gametes. What you write here is you represent the gametes of a parent on the top and the gametes of the other parent on the left. Got, got this one? You represent the gametes of one parent on the top row and the next parent on the left column. Top row and left column. Then it's simple. You separate the gametes. Using lines. I have separated this gamete. I have also separated the other gametes. And now what you are going to get? You are getting a square. You are getting a square. Isn't it? You are getting a square over here, here, here and over here. Now we have to fill up these squares. When you fill up these squares, what you get is the possible genotypes of the progeny in F1. So it's very simple. You just write the gametes of one parent on the top and the other parent on the left and you fill up the squares. You see here the squares. Here one square you can see here. Just represent this as one gamete. This is male gamete and bottom Female gamete. This is male gamete. This is female gamete. You know, male and female are represented. I'll just show the representation. This is how male gametes are represented. And this is how female gametes are represented. Just show those representations here for anyone. This can be male or this can be male. For anyone, just show this representation here. That area is filled. The remaining four squares, how to fill up these? Very simple. Just write the top left, top left gametes. For this square, the top gamete is this one, put it capital T. The left gamete is here, put it small t. Again for this square, what is the top gamete? Don't take this one, top gamete. Top gamete is what is circled. Capital T. And left gamete again small t. Similarly here, top gamete capital T. Left gamete small t, here also capital T, small t. So you can see here, for any crosses, for the F1, what will you get? Capital T, small t. This is the genotype. Capital T, small t, that means both the alleles are different. So what is the genotype? It is heterozygous. Right? Now, 
What about the phenotype? Tall. Here also tall. Here also tall as well as tall here. How did I write here the, all these things as tall? Because I can see here capital T. If you see capital T at least once, I can simply write the phenotype as tall because we have learned in the trait height, tall dominates the dwarf. So here all the four offsprings that you get are tall and all four of them are heterozygous. So as the, this, as the name suggests, it is a graphical representation. This is square, isn't it? Graphical representation. And what you are getting from this? Probability of possible genotypes. Capital T, small t likewise. When Mendel did the cross, he got only the phenotype. With the help of this square, like one can find out the probability of genotype as well. Now let us take the next one. After F1, what is the next step? Self-crossing of F1. Isn't it? Self-crossing of F1 to get the F2. Let us see how this can be represented as a Punnett square. So we should start Punnett square with gametes. We write the gametes of one parent on the top. So these are the gametes of one parent. Isn't it? I am writing the gametes on the top. And in order to understand that those are gametes, I am encircling it. Again the gametes of the next parent, I am writing on the left. So first step is, write the gametes on the top row and the left column. Next, separate out the gametes. Separated these two, separated these two. Then form the squares. Form the squares. Next one, fill up the squares. How to fill up the squares? Very simple. Top, left gametes. Just write the top and left gametes. This is the top gamete for this square. This one. And left one, this one. Both are capital T, capital T. So this is tall. What about genotype? Homozygous tall. This one, top, left. So top small t, left capital T. I got capital T. So when I have capital T here, I must write the phenotype as tall. And what about genotype? This is heterozygous. So I can simply small representation. This is hetero tall. This is homo tall. Homo means I am just writing homozygous tall. Heterozygous tall. What about this square? Take the top gamete and the left gamete. Simply write those. Top gamete capital T. Left gamete small t. So this is what tall? Different alleles. So heterozygous tall. This is also hetero tall. Again, the last column, top, left, small t, left also small t, there is no capital T, so the plant is not tall, but the plant is dwarf. The plant is dwarf. And as you all know, in the previous sessions I have already told you, recessive character will be always homozygous. There is no heterozygosity, recessive will be always homozygous. So here, you can see here, capital T, capital T, here also, capital T, small t, two times, capital T, small t, two times, and again, small t, small t, one time. Isn't it? Same result you are getting here, but this is very easy for you to represent. The importance of this Punnett square, the representation of the alleles like this, and the probable offsprings, Genotype like this will be made more clear to you or the importance will be made more important to you. You will, you will understand this better. Why this Punnett square? Why this is important? In the next video when I will be teaching you regarding the dihybrid cross. When I am teaching you the dihybrid cross, the number of gametes you get will be more. The number of offsprings here I have 4, then we will get 16. So the number of offsprings will be very large. It will be very difficult for you to simply cross like this and write the offsprings. 
and then find the phenotype and then find the genotype it will be very very difficult but if you have learned the spanet square the next session when you write the homo the, the genotypes will be very easy for you so today we have learned one concept spanet square what is that this is a graphical representation to calculate the probability the probability what 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 is the probability of coming out what the possible genotypes of the offsprings in a genetic cross thank you for now we'll see in the next session